Osama bin Laden's Death – Complete Truth Revealed in 10 Minutes Born on the 10th of March, 1957, Osama bin Laden became the most talked about man in history. But what if there's more than we know of? Was Osama bin Laden really as they painted him, or is the truth something else? Let's find out together with the Osama bin Laden life story in just 10 minutes. This video has everything you didn't know about the most wanted man in the world. The truth is finally revealed. Osama bin Laden was the 17th son out of 52 children of one of the most influential billionaires in Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Laden. His father immigrated from Yemen to Saudi Arabia and rose to direct major construction projects for the Saudi royal family. By the time of his death in 1967, his company had become one of the largest construction firms in the Middle East. The bin Ladens were pretty close to the Saudi royal family. Not only were they rich, but his family was also quite religious, including the man himself. Every year, his father would host many influential scholars from all around the world at the time of Hajj. This is when Osama started building his relations with all those great scholars. Did you know that Osama bin Laden was banned from Saudi Arabia at the time of his death, despite all his wealth and influence? His own country, unfortunately, had no place for his dead body. Today, if you pick up a magazine, read an old newspaper headline, or even search about him, you will find three famous words, world's biggest terrorist, or as we were told. Osama bin Laden is notorious for the infamous terrorist attack on 9-11 that killed almost 3,000 Americans, as well as other terrorist bombings in the US. But what is the truth behind it? The answer is simple, extremism. According to Osama's mother, he was an extremist Muslim. She claims the reason behind it to be his schooling. Osama studied public administration at King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah, where it is likely that he also received instruction in religious studies. This is where he met some members of an activist group called the Muslim Brotherhood. His mother believes that these members are the ones that brainwashed Osama. She believes they radicalized him in the name of Muslim supremacy. A human mind at such a young age is like a canvas, and whatever you paint stays there forever. Unfortunately, during the same time period, the US invaded Afghanistan, a Muslim state. Consequently, Osama's extremism strengthened to the point where he started going on secret trips to Afghanistan for their aid. Once in Afghanistan, Osama started to build new connections with the operating extremist groups there. Now, with the help of these extremists, he started recruiting volunteers from his own state, Saudi Arabia. He wanted to train them for the ongoing invasion and war in Afghanistan. But he didn't do it himself. Instead, he outsourced them to other organizations. Until this stage of his life, his focus was mainly on freeing Afghanistan from invasion, though his brain was corrupted by extremism and superiority. Maybe he had good intention, but not so good support. Who knows? What do you think? Well, there is more to the story. His focus shifts to collecting funds for his Afghanistan mission. Well, it wasn't really a problem for him considering his family status and wealth, and so he did. While all of this is very interesting, let's fast forward to 1984. He finally formalized his base in Peshawar, Pakistan. Here he started directly training and conducting the volunteers. They also started generating a database of all the volunteers that signed up. Safe to say, it was no less than a proper organization which they called Al-Qaeda. His reputation for piety and for bravery in combat enhanced his stature as a militant leader. In 1989, following the Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan, bin Laden returned to Saudi Arabia, where he was initially welcomed as a hero. However, he soon came to be regarded by the government as a radical and a potential threat. Simultaneously, in the Middle East, the new leader of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, started his expansion into the Gulf oil-rich nations, soon targeting Saudi Arabia. Well, now what? In comes Osama bin Laden. To save Saudi Arabia, especially the sacred land of Mecca and Medina, he wrote a letter to the Saudi king. In his letter, he asked for permission to use his network of fighters to defend Saudi Arabia against Iraq. While he was mobilizing his men for the war, the government denied his requests. Not only did they deny his request, they called the US for their aid. Bin Laden was outraged. So folks, this is where the conflict between Osama bin Laden and America begins and the story is about to get more interesting. To be very honest, Osama didn't really like the US aid. 
He wanted Saudi Arabia to be without any Western influence, purely based on Islamic principles and values. So he used his previous connections and soon declared a religious order. According to him, all should get trained from Afghanistan to fight in the war. He claimed that fighting your enemies was your religious duty. It turned out to be a pretty smart tactic, and he played this religious card pretty well. In no time, more than 4,000 people left Saudi Arabia for Afghanistan to get trained for the war. This ultimately led to Saudi leaders enforcing a travel ban on Osama bin Laden. Osama, however, played smart and found a way to get into Pakistan in the name of a business meeting. He then finally resided in Afghanistan and never looked back. He also received protection from its ruling Taliban militia. Saudi Arabia still tried to hunt Osama down. In fact, according to some reports, the US even offered to take Osama down and hand his body to Saudi Arabia. However, they declined their offer. Let's shed some light on the event of late 1996. In this year, bin Laden dropped not one, but two fatwas. Now, what got him all riled up? Well, he pointed fingers at the United States, saying that they were doing shady stuff like stealing resources from Muslim lands, hanging out in holy spots of Islam, and supporting governments that were basically doing whatever the US wanted in the Middle East. He also publicly praised other groups' attack on Americans, including the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center in New York. In 2001, a group of 19 individuals affiliated with Al-Qaeda orchestrated the devastating September 11th attacks. In retaliation, the US teamed up with other countries and kicked the Taliban out of Afghanistan. Now, bin Laden played hide-and-seek in the caves of Tora Bora, dodging the bombing from the US. Fast forward to 2004, just before the US presidential election. Guess who pops up? Bin Laden. He pops up in a video saying, yep, I'm the guy behind 9-11. After that, he kinda played peekaboo, releasing audio messages here and there. In 2008, he got all worked up about what was happening in Gaza. And in 2009, he threw shade at the new US president, Barack Obama, daring him to keep fighting Al-Qaeda. Talk about staying in the shadows and making noise from there. Now, as the search for him went by, US intelligence eventually located him in Abbottabad, Pakistan. On May 2, 2011, bin Laden was finally killed when a small US force transported by helicopters raided the compound. His body was taken out of Pakistan, but he was never buried. Shocking, right? Well, Osama wasn't given a regular funeral. Instead, it was a sea burial. According to the USA, Osama was a terrorist. And, well, they didn't want a shrine for a terrorist. At least not after the shrine of Saddam Hussein. Now, after thorough investigation and DNA verification, his body was carried to an aircraft carrier called the USS Vinton, which was anchored in the Arabian Sea. Hereafter, he received the Islamic death rituals. They washed his body, shrouded it in a white cloth, and gave a last prayer, and finally tied the body with a weighted bag and disposed of it in the northern Arabian Sea. From there, his body is now lost forever. Many Islamic countries and people criticized the sea burial of Osama bin Laden, but the US had its reasons. Apart from not wanting a shrine to be built in his honor, the US didn't want his grave or him to be a motivating symbol of terrorism after his death. Also, since cremation is strictly prohibited in Islam, the US chose the last option, all while respecting Islamic rituals, the sea burial. Wow, that was a whirlwind, wasn't it? From his early days to his eventual death, we covered it all. Bin Laden's life was a roller coaster, filled with twists, turns, and a touch of the bizarre. Was he a hero, a terrorist, or somewhere in between? How do you see Bin Laden?